Hello, Allie Duzette here and baby Danielle. Tomorrow is actually her 10 month birthday. So happy almost birthday, you tiny fluff. Uh, but today I wanted to talk about the Pluto return for a minute. It has been 15 days since the Pluto return for the United States of America. So just over two weeks. And uh, as I had been doing some math around our around the 2020 numbers um, involved with the Pluto return, I felt that it would be probably about now that things would start getting, you know, real, that we would start seeing the two weeks to slow the spread of whatever is going to be happening during this Pluto return. I came to that conclusion because um, the Pluto return prelude started on January the 12th of 2020. And nothing happened, you know, January the 21st, Trump shut down the border to Wuhan, and then by mid-March is when we had two weeks to stop the spread, right? So we had um, about three months before anything really big happened. And we had those, you know, 12 weeks in between where we were just kind of keeping an eye on things. So we have three Pluto returns this year because Pluto is going retrograde. And so what does that mean? It means that Pluto just whacked us across the face and then in July, it's going to whack us back. And then in December, it's going to whack us again. And then it's going to keep going. Pluto is not actually going to change which direction it's moving in. It's it's all just from the Earth's perspective. So from our perspective, Pluto is going to whack us, whack us, whack us, um, even though in real life, it's just going one direction this whole time. But from our perspective, we will get whacked three times with these Pluto returns. And so we are going to see for ourselves how that turns out. And I don't know how that will turn out, but I do know that we have, um, let's see, 18 more weeks until the next Pluto return. So that's not very long, 18 weeks, that's four and a half months. So we don't have a lot of time in between, um, but a lot can happen in not a lot of time as we learned in 2020. And as I think we're gonna learn this year as well. So what happened on the date of the Pluto return? Uh, we had the, that was like the day that Russia announced that it was gonna invade Ukraine. And, uh, and pretty much within 12 hours of the Pluto return, things had gotten like real with Russia and Ukraine. And now that is kind of taken over the news cycle. And so we can all focus on that instead of, you know, the big C and all of these things that now they need to die down before the elections coming up in the fall in, in the United States. And so we're going to have to see how this plays out. But one thing that just happened, I think last night, is that wheat, uh, Russia, let's just Google it, Russia, wheat. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna share my screen with you so you can see what came up when I Googled that. So I just Googled Russia wheat, and here we have wheat continues surge toward all time high as Russian invasion of Ukraine, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Russia-Ukraine war in the breadbasket region threatens global wheat uh, supply, it says at the very bottom of the page down there. Yeah, wheat prices hit record highs as war halts exports from Ukraine and Russia. Uh, so, okay, look at all of these. Like, yes, we're just, we're just looking over it really briefly. We're not going to dig in right now, but it looks like this is going to impact the food supply. So, and, and again, if when we look at... Um, the Pluto return chart, I guess I could just pl pull that right up because I had talked about, <clears throat> let's see, sorry, let's see, Pluto return. I've just got to pull it up really quick. Um, in our Pluto return chart, um, we have the moon in the fourth house. And so what that means is that the national focus is going to be on issues of land, and in the fourth house in a mundane chart, which has to do with the world, the, the mundo instead of um, personal stuff, it's going to look at food. It's going to deal with crops and farming. Okay, so a national focus on crops and farming and food. So this will be something interesting to keep an eye on. And one thing that's coming to me right in this moment is that Libra, of course, governs the seventh house. And in the seventh house, we have 
Pluto death and rebirth. We have Mercury over here. Um, basically some big shakeups in the house of Libra and then the moon and then Libra is actually in the fourth house for us. So anyways, I'll, it'll be really interesting to see what impact this has on the food supply. And I hadn't really thought about that specifically, but yesterday I woke up and I felt like, oh my gosh, today's the day I've got to order some food storage. And so I did, I got online and uh, my friend Elizabeth Grange sells food storage. And so I'll, I can put her link below or whatever. Um, if, if you want to get some, I, it's like freeze dried food and it's good. Like my kids will eat it. So that's what I care about because I have a lot of food storage that I'm pretty sure no one will eat <laughs> unless we're actually dying, but it will be good to have some on hand that people are willing to ingest. So, um, so anyway, uh, so I did feel like I should do that yesterday and I did. I placed an order and we'll see when it gets here. Um, and so just to be clear, I don't recommend being a crazy person or anything like that, but I do recommend keeping your eye on what's going on and um, listening to divine guidance on what you should do next uh, to, for yourself, for your family and asking the right questions. Uh, you know, ask the divine what would be really helpful for you and what you need to care about and what you don't need to care about and always write down your answers so that you can have a record of it so that you can go back and pray about the answers and get more clarity so that you can have a reminder of the answers so you can ask more questions about them later. Uh, I always recommend writing down the revelation that you receive. So, um, okay, so those are some, some things to keep an eye on. But this morning I woke up and I thought, what do, what do I need to tell everybody today? I have to have this video, but in this video I have to tell everybody to um, to start thinking about 2020 okay what in by april of 2020 what do you wish that you had done in january you know and I, i'm not really talking about like i wish i would have invested in zoom like yes probably we all wish that but um i'm i'm really talking about you know in those you know after we realized the two weeks to slow the spread were not two weeks once we started realizing oh this might stick around for a while you know what are the things that we that you wish that you would have done in january of that year does that make sense uh, because i feel like we're in the january 2020 of the pluto return right now and who knows how long that will last like maybe it will be three months or maybe maybe it will be closer to like two to three weeks and i don't know it it i mean a lot of people have already noticed that gas prices are like skyrocketing you know there are places where gas prices go up 10 cents overnight you know per gallon and these are not small shifts like we are going to see some really big shifts in what what things cost, what items are available and at what price they are available. And I don't know, it could be, it has the potential to be a stressful time for a lot of people. I don't think it has to be for us. And the way to have it not be for us is to start asking now what we need to do in order to prepare. And we need to remember that the biggest source of preparation is within our own souls. What do our souls have to do to be prepared, right? Um, because stress is an internal sensation and it's possible to go through, it, it's possible for two people to go through the same horrific set of circumstances and one person to come out feeling calm and loved and another person to be like totally insane. We want to be on the calm and loved side and not the insane side. And the way to do that is to start focusing a lot on the state of our inner self and our inner preparedness. We've got to uh, make sure that our lives are in alignment with, you know, the divine and reality as a whole. And so one thing that I really want to be clear about is that it does mean we have to make restitution for the things that we've done in the past that have hurt other people. We have to um, do what we can to make those things right. And I really feel like that is a top priority right now. So if there's somebody that you need to apologize to, if there's um, somebody that you need to repay, like if you borrowed something and you never gave it back, go give it back. Like it's time to erase those kinds of karmic burdens on your own soul, because these things really do affect us and they affect us and our families and our physical bodies and our homes. These, these unresolved energies really affect us quite a bit. Hey, stop it. 
she agrees. Yeah. Yes, see, I agree. Go fix your stuff. Go, go make things right, everybody. So um, I do believe that as we do make things right, and as we, as we reset our minds to be more in line with the divine, we are going to see how uh, things that would otherwise be really stressful aren't as stressful anymore. And we will see how blessings just show up for us right in the moment that we need them. And that is exactly what we want right now. That's exactly what we want. So, okay, guys, get to work. I hope you know what to do. And thanks for being here. Tune in with the divine and start writing down the answers that you get. You can do it. We're all going to be fine. We'll take our deep breaths and align with the divine. Thanks, guys.